Hello, welcome to Switch Dawn and welcome to my video review of Peaky F***ing Blinders on the Nintendo Switch. Sorry about that, terrible accent. Welcome to Switch Dawn. This is a look at Peaky Blinders Mastermind, which comes from the, uh, the great guys over at Curve Digital and is out on the Nintendo Switch and other platforms today, I believe, the 20th of August. Um, this is definitely for fans of the show. It's a puzzle game um, based on the TV series. But before I, I dive in, just wanted to stop at this part here. This already, uh, as a big fan of the show myself, already grabbed me as a real brilliant feeling of Peaky Blinders. You've got that sort of nice Peaky Blinders font, but for me it's the music. Just have a little, little listen to the music. If anyone's familiar with the TV show, the, the, the title tune is uh, Red Right Hand by Nick Cave, which is an absolutely brilliant song. But that theme sort of carries through the whole of the show with like, you know, you could almost turn on BBC Radio 6 and get, you know, the best UK indie bands and uh, underground bands. And that's what the soundtrack is for Peaky Blinders, which is excellent. It's kind of set in the 40s, 30s, 40s. Um, just suits it perfectly. And this game's captured that. So... Anyway, enough waffle. This is um, a really nice little puzzle game based on Peaky Blinders. Ten levels. Uh, each level takes around about... Well, they start easy enough, sort of 15-20 minutes. And then uh, as it goes on, it can reach anywhere between 30 minutes and... Uh, well, 30 to 45 minutes, really. What I'm going to do is take you through the first level. I'm about sort of just over halfway through the whole game. It's excellent, as I say. Um, but what I don't want to do is spoil things too much. Because, um, especially if you're a fan of the TV show, then you're going to want to play through this as it's kind of got a really nice story uh, going on through it. So, what I will do is just show you how the cutscenes work, uh, just so you can get a look at the artwork. Um, everything, there's nothing voiced, so everything is text based. But you can see here the artwork is just beautiful. It's like vector, uh, vector style artwork of all the characters, really nicely drawn. You've got really cool portraits at the bottom. The, uh, the, sort of story and language and text that's used in the game really feels like the the tv show as well uh that means obviously lots of swearing but also it feels very natural like the tv show it feels like you know if you know the characters then uh, you can sort of almost hear them reading the the lines in your head so that's really good it, it, there's not really much in the way of animation in these cutscenes. they're pretty much static uh, and they just follow this sort of um, text dialogue at the bottom telling the story on the next level. So I'm going to skip that and we're going to start the, the first level. We can see there's virtually no loading times. But what I will do is pause the game just very quickly and explain what's going on. So this is like an isometric puzzle game. Got some a really cool mechanic, but a couple of other nice little mechanics, but one really central cool mechanic uh, that's based around manipulating time. You've got a mission to do. Uh, each um, mission involves multiple steps and you see those in the top left hand corner. You can see the first one here, chapter one is uh, Champagne Celebrations. The Peaky Blinders are preparing for a party, but there's an issue with the booze supply. So you just follow the prompts in the top left-hand corner and uh, yeah, and just get to the end of the mission. So for the, the next thing that struck me, if it wasn't for the music, then you've got an absolutely beautiful look here. Again, really faithful to the TV show and the, the sets from the TV show. But what struck me most is probably Tommy Shelby. The character that you start off with here and you do switch between characters but just they've captured his walk absolutely perfectly absolutely love strutting around small heath as tommy shelby so um here we are in the shelby house as a uh, tommy's sister ada and again you can chat to people and uh, get uh, little hints and stuff and little progress the story this is their sort of back room when they do all their illegal operations and you can talk to various people here, but the, the first mission here is to uh, see the top left-hand corner. Talk to the barman at McCulloch's pub. Now these are timed, and if you do run out of time, you do fail the mission. Um, just means you have to start again. There's no real penalty apart from that. So we've got the keys. And we're going to open the front door and make our way to the McCullen's pub to speak to the landlord there. We'll try and find a champagne supply. Basically, the uh, without spoiling too much of this story... The, uh, the story is here, we're, we're, we're back in uh, Small Heath, the Peaky Blinders are back and we need to throw a party to let everybody know that uh, we're back in business, but we've run out of champagne. Uh, it's been stolen from us, we need to go and get some back. So the next thing I want to 
uh, speak about here is the sort of cones of vision. If you've played tactical games before, you're kind of used to this kind of thing, but there's the orange cone of vision there that you can't walk in. Just gives you a very nice introduction here. Just tells you, you know, basically that his cone of vision is blocked by objects. And we'll see in a minute how that gets more complicated. You might see a prompt there. I'll explain that a bit more in, in detail in a minute. You can see here, this uh, next person is actually moving his cone of vision. So he's looking around. And if they see you again, fouls the mission. So you need to stay out of sight. So we can see that his cone of vision didn't reach beyond this barrel. So we can kind of inconspicuously hang around here. Do, 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 nothing to see. And then uh, he's blocked by that car as he turns away. And we can sneak past. So a little bit of stealth. You can see it's very, very minor stutter. Very minor. Uh, considering how beautiful the game looks. You can, you've got like a, a moderate amount to look around here with the right stick. So we're following the prompts. Here we are at McCulloch's pub. I need to go and speak to McCullen. So again, a little bit more story, but we can just skip that and follow the prompts. So the next one is find a way inside the Gilroy lockup. So we've got up these stairs to the next level. Now we've got the first of... Uh, well, first of the real puzzles, really. So we've got a locked door here we need to get in. And what we've got here is uh, an NPC. Now, what Tommy can do, his special ability, is he can kind of force people against you know, against their will. So I can force this person to do my bidding for me. So he's just asked uh, Derek Main there to open the door. So he will go and open the door for us. And allows us to walk through. And we can go up onto the roof. Let's scurry along here on scene. You might see that Ada underneath us. She's getting into position. So again, need to stay out of sight a bit here. Avoid the the cones. Just about made that without being spotted. And uh, here we are down in the basement. So the next the next step up in puzzles, and again, this this kind of builds and builds as the game goes on. They get slightly more complicated. But this time, we can take control of an NPC. Um, you get a time there, so we've got 15 seconds. So we need to get to this lever. Hold down the A button to hold the door open. Now, you may see at the bottom of the screen uh, a timeline. And you see the ally timeline there as uh, I'm scrolling back and forth on that, the yellow bit. Now basically you can rewind time. So we played out that little part of the, the chap there walking to the switch, holding it down. And now using ZL and ZR, we can manipulate time. So we can rewind using ZL back to a point before that guy got to the switch. We can press X to carry on playing the game from that point, but switch to Tommy and you'll see what effect that has. So if we switch to Tommy with the D-pad, the actions that we carried out with this guy still play out, but now we're Tommy. And we can move through the door that we opened for ourselves. So as I say, as the game goes on, these puzzles will build and build. Uh, and you switch between more characters. So here's Ada, our sister. Her special ability is that she can distract people. So she can distract their cone of vision. And again, we're going to skip that. So off she goes to speak to this bad guy. So she's distracting him with her charms. I don't know if you've seen the TV show, but she's lovely. Ada. Um... So here comes the next guy. She's going to speak to him and keep him occupied while we sneak past. Thank you, Ada. This is the final guy here. So we're just going to kind of wait in the shadows to not be spotted. And then she's going to distract. Oh, she doesn't need to distract him, actually. She's just opened the door for us. And we sneak behind them, following the prompt again. So we need to inside the lock up here so this guy needs to get a key so we're taking control of him we've got 15 seconds so go and get the key and then press Y to pass it to Tommy switch back to Tommy who's now got the key and he can let himself in She's going to distract the workers. We're going to grab the booze and stick it in the van. That's what she does to distract the first one. We need to collect three bottles. Pick them up and stick them in the back of the van here. She's going to distract the next one. 
we asked this guy to get us a bottle. Which is very nice of him, considering. Back to Tommy. So this is kind of spoiling the, uh, the the first mission and how to do it. But um, that's what you're doing here. so we've got the time limit version again. So we're gonna hold this down for a little while, just give us enough time. Don't have to hold it down too long, a few seconds. Just enough time so we can switch back to Tommy. Put down on the D-pad. He's holding the door open. We can sneak through. See that didn't quite work out because we can't get back out of this door now. So we need to rewind. Back to the point here before we spoke to the guy. Play it again. And we're going to hold down the door for longer and Tommy gets out this time. So we can switch back to Tommy. Get the final bottle in the van. And that's the end of mission one. So, as you can see, quite a quick mission. It's just introducing the mechanics to you. Um, kind of spoiled it there but it's kind of easy and uh, you'll, you'll be able to figure your way out around that so that's Peaky Blinders another little bit of story and we'll move on to uh, the second mission and as I say as they go on they do get a little bit more complicated introducing more characters that have got more abilities sometimes you're controlling sort of three or four characters uh, each with their own ability like uh, I think it's Finn is the little one or John uh, Finn I think it is uh, is the little younger brother he can sneak through little holes and stuff like that so Lots of ways to figure it out. Um, this really is a, a beautiful love letter to the series. If you like puzzle games, I think you're going to get a lot out of it anyway, because it's got that really cool time manipulation mechanic. But if you're a fan of Peaky Blinders, then it's an absolute no-brainer, really. It really captures the uh, the feel of the show really well. Um, the publishers, when they passed me a code, and uh, again, thanks for that, for Curve Digital. Um, they said it's a love letter to the show from quite a small... Uh, development team so you can tell the uh, the effort and the heart that's gone into it and I really appreciate it as a fan of the show so there you go that's Peaky Blinders on the Nintendo Switch uh, I think it's uh, 20 pounds just under 20 pounds as a launch and I think there's a, a special offer at the moment I think it's 20% off taking it down to 15.99 uh, probably 30% isn't it but there's, there's a special offer at the moment anyway if you can grab that while it's going good so I hope you enjoyed that thanks for watching guys uh, hit the like button. Uh, let me know below if you like Peaky Blinders and if you've got any questions on this. And of course, please subscribe if you are new around here. Really appreciate that. But until then, I will bid you farewell and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers, everyone. Bye bye.